The Confession of St. Patrick was written over 1,500 years ago by St. Patrick himself. It is the only document that verifies the fact that Patrick even existed as a living, breathing human being. The confession was not intended to be an autobiography, so please don't be concerned with following a continuous train of thought. Patrick simply wrote it as an expression of his gratitude for God's faithfulness, and also as a defense of his ministry in Ireland, a defense to silence various accusations from critics in his homeland, Britain. Nothing else was written about Patrick until 200 years after his death. The stories that emerged were highly inconsistent with the author of the confession. For instance, Patrick has often been credited with driving the snakes out of Ireland. Historic records, however, clearly indicate that reptiles never existed in Ireland in the first place. Patrick was born in Britain around 390 AD and therefore raised in the ancient Celtic church in those days, there was no Protestant or Catholic church. It was simply the early church. Scholars may disagree on dates of places and events mentioned in the confession, but one thing is certain. Patrick was a Bible-believing, Bible-preaching missionary. In fact, he quotes scripture over 200 times in his confession, which you are about to hear. Today's presentation includes a verse from the Song of St. Patrick. Tradition ascribes its authorship to Patrick himself. The piece is also known as the Lorica, the breastplate, and the deer's cry. It is now our pleasure to present Roger Nelson in the English translation of the Confession of St. Patrick. Brother Shavis, good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you, Grand. Grand to see you this evening. Oh, Brendan, Grand to see you. Thanks for the warm hand. Oh, it's good. Deirdre, God love you. Good to see you again. Oh, Bridget, Grand to see you here. My, oh, and what a handsome group of young people we have here in the front. I am Patrick. I bless you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I am Patrick, a sinner, most unlearned, the least of all the faithful, and utterly despised by many. My father was Colparnius, a deacon, the son of Potitus, a priest of the village Benevum Tiberniae. He had a country estate nearby, and there I was taken captive. I was then about 16 years of age. I did not know the true God. I was taken into captivity to Ireland with many thousands of people, and deservedly so, because we turned away from God and did not keep his commandments and did not obey our priests who used to remind us of our salvation. And there the Lord brought over us the wrath of his anger and scattered us among many nations, even to the utmost parts of the earth, where now my, my littleness is placed among strangers. Ah, but there the Lord opened the sense of my unbelief that I might at last remember my sins and be converted with all my heart to the Lord my God, who had regard for my downcast state and mercy on my ignorance and youth, and watched over me before I knew him and before I was able to distinguish between good and evil, and guarded me and comforted me as would a father his son. Hence, I cannot be silent, nor indeed is it expedient about the great benefits and great mercy which the Lord has bestowed upon me in the land of my captivity. Ah, for this, we can give thanks to God for his chastisement, 
to exalt and praise his wonders before every nation that is anywhere under heaven, because there is no other God, nor ever was, nor will be, than God the Father, unbegotten, without beginning, from whom is all beginning, the Lord of the universe, as we have been taught, and his Son, Jesus Christ, whom he declared to have always been with the Father, spiritually and ineffably begotten of the Father, before the beginning of the world, before all beginning. And by him are made all things, visible and invisible. He was made man, and having defeated death, was received into heaven by the Father. And he has given him all power over all names, in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue shall confess to him that Jesus Christ is Lord and God in whom we believe and whose advent we expect soon to be judge of the living and of the dead, who will render to every man according to his deeds. And he has poured forth abundantly upon us the Holy Spirit, the gift and pledge of immortality, who makes those who believe and obey sons of God and joint heirs with Christ. And Him do we confess and adore, one God in the Trinity of the Holy Name. I bind unto myself today the strong name of the Trinity, by invocation of the same, the three in one, the one in three, the three in one, the one in three, the three in one, the one in three, I bind unto myself today the strong name of the Trinity. Uh, for he himself has said through the prophet, Call upon me in the day of thy trouble, and I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. And again he says, it is honorable to reveal and confess the works of God. And although I, I am imperfect in many things, nevertheless I wish that my brethren and kinsmen should know what sort of parson I am, that they may understand my heart's desire. Understand my heart's desire. As a youth, uh, nay, nay, almost as a boy, not able to speak, I was taken captive uh, before I knew what to pursue and what to avoid. Hence today I blush and fear exceedingly to reveal my lack of uh, education, for I am unable to tell my story to those versed in the art of, art of um, concise writing in such a way, uh, I mean as my spirit and mind long to do. But if indeed it had been given to me as was given to others, then I would not be silent because of my desire of thanksgiving. And if some people think me arrogant for doing so, in spite of my, my lack of knowledge and my, my, my slow tongue, it is, after all, written, the stammering tongue shall quickly learn to speak peace. <laughs> the stammering tongue shall quickly learn to... <clears throat> Ah, the little bugs that get in here. Ah. How much more should we earnestly strive to do this? We who are, so Scripture says, a letter of Christ for salvation unto the uttermost parts of the earth, and though not an eloquent one, yet written in your hearts, not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God. And again, the Spirit witnesses that even rusticity was created by the highest. Whence I, once rustic, exiled, unlearned, who does not know how to provide for the future. This at least I know most certainly, that before I was humiliated, I was like a, like a stone lying in the deep mire, 
And he that is mighty came and lifted me up and raised me aloft and placed me on top of the wall. Therefore, I ought to cry out and rend so render something to the Lord for his great benefits here and in eternity. Benefits which the mind of men is unable to appraise. Wherefore then be astonished, you great and little that fear God and you men of letters on your estates. Listen and pour over this. Who was it that roused up me, the fool that I am, from the midst of those who in the eyes of men are, are wise and, and expert in law and, and powerful in words and, and in everything? And he inspired me, me, the outcast of this world before others, to be the man who, if only I could, who with fear and reverence and without blame, should faithfully serve those to whom the love of Christ entrusted to me for the duration of my life, if I should be worthy. Yes, indeed, to serve them humbly and sincerely. In the light, therefore, of our faith in the Trinity, I must make this choice. Regardless of danger, I must make known the gift of God and everlasting consolation without fear. And frankly, frankly, I must spread everywhere the name of God so that after my, my decease, I may leave a bequest for my brethren and sons whom I have baptized in the Lord. Oh, so many thousands of people. And I was not worthy, nor was I such, that the Lord should grant this to his servant, that after my misfortunes and so great difficulties, after my captivity, after the lapse of so many years, he should give me so great a grace in behalf of that nation, a thing which in my youth I never once expected or thought of. But uh, after I came to Ireland, every day I had to tend sheep. And many times a day I prayed. And the love of God and his fear came to me more and more. And my faith was strengthened. And my spirit was so moved that in a single day I would pray as many as a hundred times and almost as many in the night, and this even when staying in the woods and on the mountains. Yeah. Ah, and I used to get up before daylight for prayer, through frost, through snow, through rain, and I felt no harm, and there was no sloth in me. For as I now see, the spirit within me was then fervent, and there one night, I heard in my sleep a voice saying to me, It is well that you fast. Soon you will go to your own country. And again, after a short while, I, I heard a voice saying to me, See, your ship is ready. But it was not near, but at a distance of perhaps 200 miles. And I had never been there, nor did I know a living soul there. And so... I took to flight and left the man with whom I had stayed for six years. And I went on the strength of God who directed my way to my good. And I feared nothing <laughs> until I came to that ship. Now, on the day I arrived, the ship was to be set afloat. And I said I was able to pay for my passage with them. The captain was not pleased, and with indignation answered harshly, It is of no use for you to ask us to go along with us. Well, when I heard this, I left them to return to the hut where I was staying. And as I went, I began to pray. But before my prayer had ended, I heard one of them shouting behind me, Hurry, come! We will take you on in good faith! Make friends with us in any way you like. So on that day, I refused to suck their nipples, a pagan custom, for the fear of God, but rather hoped that they would come to the salvation of Jesus Christ because they were pagans. 
Thus, I had my way with them, and we set sail at once. Would you like some water? <laughs> no, anyone for water. After three days, we reached land, and for 28 days, we traveled through deserted country. They lacked food, and hunger overcame them. The next day, the captain said to me, Tell me, Christian, you say your God is great and all-powerful. Why then do you not pray for us? As you can see, we are suffering from hunger, and it is unlikely indeed we shall ever see a human being again. I said to them, full of confidence, Be truly converted with all your heart to the Lord my God, because nothing is impossible for him, so that this day he may send food your way until you are satisfied, because he has abundance everywhere. <laughs> oh, with God's help, so it came to pass. Suddenly, a herd of pigs appeared on the road before our eyes. <laughs> and they killed many of them. Oh, they stopped there for two nights and, and fully recovered their strength. And their hounds received their fill as well, for many of them had grown weak and were half dead along the way. But from that time, they, they had plenty of food. Ah, they also found wild honey and offered some of it to me. One of them said, This is a sacrificial offering to the pagan gods. Thanks be to God I tasted none of it. That same night, when I was asleep, Satan assailed me violently, a thing I shall remember as long as I shall be in this body. And he fell upon me like a, oh, like a, a huge rock, and I, I could not stir a limb. But whence came it into my mind, ignorant as I am, to call upon Elijah? Meanwhile, I saw the sun rise in the sky, and, and while I was shouting, Elijah! Elijah! With all of my might, suddenly the splendor of that sun fell upon me and immediately freed me of all misery. And I believe that I was sustained by Christ my Lord and that even then His Spirit was crying out in my behalf. And I hope it will be so on the day of my tribulation, as is written in the gospel. On that day, declares the Lord, it is not you that speak, but the Spirit of your Father that speaketh in you. I bind unto myself today the power of God to hold and lead, his eye to watch, his might to stay, his ear to hearken to my need. The wisdom of my God to teach, his hand to guide, his shield to ward, the word of God to give me speech, his heavenly host to be my guard against the demon snares of sin, the vice that gives temptation force, the natural lusts that war within. <laughs> the hostile men that mar my course. <laughs> A few or many, far or nigh, in every place and in all ours, against their fierce hostility, I bind to me these holy powers. If your foot gets cold, just let me know. You can borrow my boot. <laughs> oh, God love you. <laughs> uh, let's see.
pull myself together here. There. Oh, many years later, <clears throat> I fell into captivity again. The first night, I heard a divine message saying to me, two months will you be with them. And so it came to pass. On the 60th night thereafter, the Lord delivered me from their hands. And again, after a few years, I was in Britain with my people who, who received me as their son and sincerely besought me that now at last, having suffered so many hardships, I should not leave them and go elsewhere. And there in the night, I saw the vision of a man whose name was Victoricus, coming as it were from Ireland with countless letters. And he gave one of them to me. And I read the opening words of the letter, which were, the voice of the Irish. And as I began to read the letter, I thought at the same moment I heard their voice, those beside the wood of Volklet, which is near the Western Sea. And thus did they cry out as with one mouth, we are the holy boy. Come and walk among us once more. And I, I was quite broken in heart. I could read no further. So I woke up. Thanks be to God. After many years, he gave to them according to their cry. And another night, whether within me or beside me, I know not, God knows. They called me, most unmistakably, with words which I heard, but, uh, but could not understand, except that at the end of the prayer, he spoke thus. He that hath laid down his life for thee, he it is that speaketh in thee. And so I awoke full of joy. <laughs> Christ be in me, Christ be before me, Christ be behind me, Christ be within. Christ be above me, Christ be below me, Christ on my right hand, Christ on my left. <laughs> now, now it, it would be tedious to give a detailed account of all my labors or even a part of them. Now, let me tell you briefly how the merciful God often freed me from slavery and twelve dangers in which my life was at stake, not to mention numerous plots which I, I uh, cannot express in words, for I, I do not wish to bore my listeners. But God is my witness who knows all things even before they come to pass, as, as he used to forewarn even me, poor wretch that I am, of many things by a divine message. Whence came I by this wisdom which was not in me, who neither knew the number of my days nor what God was? And whence was given to me afterwards the gift so great, so, so salutary, to know God and to love him, although at the price of leaving my country and my parents. For I am very much God's debtor, who gave me such grace that many people were reborn in God through me and afterwards confirmed, and that clerics were ordained for them everywhere, for a people just come into the faith, whom the Lord took from the utmost parts of the earth, as he promised through the prophet. To thee the Gentiles shall come from the ends of the earth and shall say, How false are the idols that our fathers got for themselves! And there is no profit in them. And again, I have set thee, thee as a light before the Gentiles, that thou mayest be for salvation unto the utmost part of the earth. And it is here that I wish to wait for his promise, who surely never deceives, as he promises in the gospel. They shall come from the east and the west and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, as we believe the faithful will come from all the world. Ha! Ah, for that reason, therefore, we ought to fish well and diligently, as the Lord exhorts in advance and teaches, saying, Come ye after me, and I will make you to become fishers of men. And again he says through the prophet, Behold, I send many fishers and hunters, saith God. 
and so on. <clears throat> Hence, it was most necessary to spread our nets so that a great multitude and throng might be caught for God, and that there be clerics everywhere to baptize and exhort a people in need and want, as the Lord in the gospel states, exhorts, and teaches, saying, Go ye therefore now, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the age. And again he says, Go ye therefore into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be condemned. And again, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a testimony to all nations, and then shall come the end. And so too the Lord announces through the prophet and says, And it shall come to pass in the last day, saith the Lord, that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, and upon my servants, and indeed upon my handmaids, will I pour out of those days of my Spirit, and they shall prophesy. And in Hosea he says, I will call that which was not my people, my people, and her that had not obtained mercy, one that had obtained mercy. And it shall be in that place where it was said, You are not my people. There they shall be called the sons of the living God, of whom all nature hath creation, eternal Father, Spirit, Word. Praise to the Lord of my salvation. Salvation is of Christ the Lord. <laughs> Hence, how did it come to pass in Ireland that a people who never had a knowledge of God, but until now always worshipped idols and things impure, have been made a people of the Lord and are called sons of God? That the sons and daughters of the kings of the Irish are seen to be monks and virgins of Christ? Among others, uh a blessed Irish woman of noble birth, beautiful, full-grown, whom I had baptized, came to us after some days for a particular reason. She told us she had received a message from a messenger of God, and he admonished her to be a virgin of Christ and draw near to God. Thanks be to God, on the sixth day after this, she chose most laudably and eagerly what all virgins of Christ do, and not that their fathers agree with them. <laughs> oh no, they often ever suffer persecution and undeserved reproaches from their parents. And yet, their number is ever increasing. How many have been reborn here so as to be of our kind? I, I do not know. not to mention widows and those who practice continence. But greatest is the suffering of those women who live in slavery. Every day they have to endure terror and threats. Ah, but the Lord gave His grace to many of His maidens. For though they are forbidden to do so, they follow Him bravely. I bind unto myself the power of the great love of cherubim, the sweet well done in judgment hour, the service of the seraphim, confessor's faith, apostle's word, the patriarch's prayers, the prophet's scrolls, all good deeds done unto the Lord. 
and purity of virgin souls. Wherefore then, <clears throat> even if I wished to leave them and to go to Britain, and oh, how I would have loved to go to my country and to my parents, and also to Gaul, to visit the brethren and to see the face of the, of the saints of my Lord. God knows that I much desire it, but I am bound by the Spirit who gives evidence against me if I do this, telling me I shall be guilty. And I am afraid of losing the labor which I have begun. Nay, nay, not I, but Christ the Lord who bade me come here and stay with him for the rest of my life, if the Lord will, and will guard me from every evil way, that I might not sin before him. And let those who will laugh and scorn, but I shall not be silent, nor shall I hide the signs and wonders which the Lord showed me many years before they came to pass, as he knows all things, even before the times of the world. Although I be rude in all things, Nevertheless, I have tried somehow to keep my integrity and that of my Christian brethren and the, the virgins of Christ and, and those pious women who of their own accord made me gifts and laid on the altar some of their ornaments. And I gave them back to them. And they were offended that I did so. But I did it for the hope of lost and success, in order to preserve myself cautiously in everything, and so they, that they might not seize upon me or the ministry of my service under the pretext of dishonesty, and so that I might not, even in the slightest matter, give the infidels the opportunity to defame or defile. When I baptize so many thousands of people, did I perhaps expect from any of them as much as a, a half a scruple? Tell me, and I will restore it to you. Or when the Lord ordained clerics everywhere through my unworthy person, and I conferred upon them the ministry free, if I asked any of them as much as the price of my shoes, speak against me, and I will return it to you. On the contrary, I spent money for you, and I went to you, and to everywhere, even to the farthest districts beyond which there lived nobody, and where, where nobody had ever come to, to baptize, or, or to ordain the clergy, or to, to, to confirm the people. With the grace of the Lord, I did everything lovingly and gladly for your salvation. All the while, I used to give presents to the kings, uh, besides the fees I paid to their sons who travel with me. Even so, they laid hands on me and my companions, and on that day they eagerly wished to kill me. But my time had not yet come, and everything they found with this they took away. Me, they put in irons. <laughs> on the fourteenth day, the Lord delivered me from their power. And... Our belongings were returned to us because of God and, and our dear friends. Now, you, you know how much I paid to those who administered justice in all those districts to which I came frequently. I think I distributed among them not less than the price of fifteen men so that you might enjoy me and that I might always enjoy you in God. I am not sorry for it. Indeed, I still spend and shall spend more. God has power to grant me afterwards that I myself might be spent for your souls. I call God to witness upon my soul that I lie not. Neither I hope am I speaking to you as an occasion of flattery or of covetousness or because I look for honor from any of you. 
Sufficient is the honor that is not yet seen, but is anticipated in the heart. Faithful is he who promised. He never lies. I bind to me this day for error by power of faith Christ's incarnation, his baptism in the Jordan River, his death on the cross for my salvation, his bursting from the spiced tomb, his riding up the heavenly way, his coming at the day of doom. I bind unto myself today. But I, I see myself in the present world, exalted beyond measure by the Lord. And I was not worthy, nor was I such that he should grant this to me. I know perfectly well, though not by my own judgment, that poverty and misfortune become me better than riches and pleasures. For Christ the Lord, too, was made poor for our sakes, and I, unhappy wretch that I am, have no wealth, even if I wished for it. Daily I expect murder or fraud or captivity or whatever it may be, but I fear none of these things because of the promises of heaven. I have cast myself into the hands of God Almighty, who rules everywhere. As the prophet says, cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. Ah, so now, now I commend my soul to my faithful God, for whom I am an ambassador in all my wretchedness. But God respects no parson and chose me for this office to be, although among his least, one of his ministers. Hence, let me render unto him for all he has done for me. But what can I say or what can I promise to my Lord as I can do nothing that he has not given me? Uh, may he search the hearts and deepest feelings, for greatly and exceedingly do I wish, and ready I was, that he should give me his chalice to drink, as he gave it also to the others who loved him. Wherefore may God never permit it to happen to me, that I should lose his people which he purchased in the utmost parts of the world. I pray to God to give me perseverance and to deign that I be a faithful witness to Him to the end of my life, to my God. And if ever I have done any good for my God, whom I love, I beg Him to grant me that I may shed my blood with those, those, those exiles and captives for His name's sake, even though I should be denied a grave or my body be woefully torn to pieces, limb by limb, by hounds or wild beasts, or the fowls of the air devour it. I am firmly convinced that if this should happen to me, I would have gained my soul together with my body, because on that day, without doubt, we, we shall rise in the brightness of the sun, that is, in the glory of Christ Jesus our Redeemer, as sons of God and joint heirs with Christ, being made conformable to His image. For of Him, and by Him, and in Him, we shall reign. This sun, this sun which we see rises daily for us because he commands so, will never reign, nor will its splendor last. What is more, those wretches who adore it will be miserably punished. Not so we who believe in and worship the true Son, Christ, who will never perish, nor will he who does his will. But he abides forever, even as Christ abides forever, who reigns with God the Father Almighty and the Holy Spirit before time and now and in all eternity. Amen.
He's okay now. <coughs> Behold, again and again will I set forth the words of my confession. I testify in truth and in joy of heart before God and His holy angels that I never had any reason except the gospel and its promises why I should ever return to the people from whom once before I barely escaped. I pray those who fear and reverence God, whosoever deigns to hear these words which Patrick, a sinner unlearned, has spoken in Ireland, that no one should ever say it was my ignorance if I ever did or showed forth anything, however small, according to God's good pleasure. But let this be your conclusion, and let it so be thought, as is the perfect truth. It was the gift of God This is my confession before I die. Bonnecti no fela podrick, which being interpreted from the Gaelic is the blessing of St. Patrick's Feast. Or in other words, happy St. Patrick's Day, a little bit out of season perhaps. God love you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Moira, good to see you.